Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Miss Vegas and Jim. Today's date is May 15, 2019, and what a great day we had today. Miss Vegas, how about telling us what we're going to talk about? Today? Okay, so we're going to talk about ENSV, ACB, CLRB, Cisco, and Love, and we just get right to the point. So we had ENSV today, which had their earnings after hours, and you know what? What a great earnings report they had. Their first quarter highlights for 2019 versus last year. Their revenues increased 29% to $26.2 million, up from 20.3. They have enhancement service revenue up 29% from 19.3, now up to 24.8. Their net income was up 111%, which is phenomenal. Um, so you know what? This company has adjusted EBITDA as well as up 49%. And uh, it's going to be improving by 360 basis points year over year. They delivered solid results virtually in all key metrics of the first quarter. The revenue was great. The president and CEO, Ian Dickinson, is doing a great job. He talked about how the revenue growth was impressive, especially the first half of January, which was slower than normal because customers were revamping their frack activity because crude oil prices finally recovered. Um and he did talk also about how net income was a bit lower than expected due to some cost overruns in their water transfer segment due to frozen water lines that did require to use a third party uh, to outsource to uh, obviously defrost those water lines. So um, eight of the last nine quarters have been showing year over year increases in revenue and their annual profit metrics have trended higher in the last two years. So they're very optimistic about continuing their positive momentum and um i think we'll hear more about this company so definitely i mean i have this as a swing trade for quite some time i took advantage of the pullbacks on the stock weeks ago um so looking for a continuation potentially tomorrow on the stock and i'm just going to turn it over to jim to talk to us about that chart and what can we expect to see because it did run after hours a little bit and then it obviously it's pulled back around 65 cents so what can we kind of see of ensv I guess maybe tomorrow when there's maybe going to be some volume coming through. Well, I'm quite impressed on who alerted this stock for one thing, Mr. Wall Street, ex Wall Street's one of our room members, and he keeps you know a pretty good key on on this trade here. And and thanks for him for helping the room out and explaining all the 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 things that go with it. So this is the year's chart right now. You can see it had a year high of 150, and it had a real strong pullback back to 30. About 33 cents at the end of the year when we had that crash on the SPY back in December. Well, ever since then, it's created a little channel of resistance at around 59 cents, 60 cents, and it's kept in bottom support level off that channel right here, right around the 40, 40 cent area. Well, he's kept us on track with his trade all this time, especially on the pullback. And the channel that I'm talking about is the 41.50 to the 58. 96 well as i pull up the 20 day chart you'll get a better glance of how low this kind of flattened out there for 20 days and then here after hours it ran almost up to a dollar it hit 94.94.5 cents so i'm going to pull up the one day now three minute and you can see what we have here we have this little pennant flag working right now it's squeezed into a support level of 64.91 we're right at 65 right after hours. It did close at 46 cents. And that, to me, that's a real nice bounce, a 19 cents bounce. And it's holding steady right here. And I really love the earnings on this trade. I wish I'd have paid a little bit more attention to it myself. But so right now, we've got a pivot point area at the 64.91. We're going to have a low support on this right around the 51 area. If not 51, it'll be a little under, little under that 50, but I'm going to call that a solid support. So we have a, a low support. So we have a pivot point. We have three resistances right here, and we have the three resistances that go above it. And what we've got to do is break the 78.89, 78.71 area. That's what we got to break to bring it up to the new highs. Now this just had earnings after hours and it's kind of stalled out here a little bit and hold it held well at the 65 area. Right now we're at 64, it says on the tape. So let's see if we can, if you're not in the trade, don't chase it, let it come to you. 
I think this area right here around 6491 is going to be the pivot point to either go up or either to come down and retrace back up. So if it pulls back, that'll become a resistance. If it breaks out, the 64 will become a support. And this is ENSV. Please keep it on watch. I'm really, really attracted to the earnings. And he himself has said oil and energy was going to be one of the number one plays this year. And I agree with him 100%. The next one we're going to talk about is one of my favorite sectors, and that's the marijuana sector, ACB. Okay, so you know what? ACB, last night I was uh, actually with the group late last night into earnings because we kept wondering when the hell are the earnings coming out. And the finally earnings came out last night. And you know what? Last night it didn't look that pretty because then the stock was pulling back and people were asking me questions late last night saying, oh, my gosh what's your thoughts on ACB? And I said, you know what? My thoughts are this. Uh, it's got to hold 840. I said, it's going to have a pullback. I said, but you know what? I think that what they're, what I read from the conference call transcripts that everything that they're doing, uh, the market is liking. And so what I do want to mention is this. So, you know, Aurora Cannabis is actually getting ready for the next phase of their legalization. Um, they did mention that they would uh, be able to meet the demand of products like vaping pens and the edibles, because don't forget, Canada is going to allow them this fall. And the company is looking to pump out more cannabis oil. And Aurora Cannabis stock rallied because other marijuana stocks advanced as well. But the uh, chief corporate officer, Cam uh, Bately, he was saying that um, everything's in place. He said that Aurora wouldn't need to wait for the opening of their polar facility uh which is actually dedicated to turning out products like the vapes and the cannabis infused gummy bears and mints and chocolates and they're going to have an adequate supply so aurora expects the construction on polaris which is their loc their other location that they have to wrap up late this year and canada legalized products like dry buds and oil for recreational use in 2018 but you know what um, I'm sorry, but, uh, 2019, but he did mention they did not legalize the edibles just yet, but it will be coming up. So, you know what? Stay tuned on that because this company has so much more. They have a huge facility. Um, and you know, don't forget we have Nelson Peltz who's involved. He is their, um, uh, ambassador there and he is going strategic, uh, ambassador and he is definitely looking to do other kinds of partnerships. I mean, we know that guy, he's a self-made multi-billionaire and uh, extremely successful and he is on this team. And you know what? I'm loving with the action that I saw today on ACB. I also saw a lot of blog trades come through. So very, very impressive on, uh, what's going on. And, uh, you know what? It takes time. Things, sometimes things take time. And you know what the expression says, uh, what Jim likes to say, measure twice, cut once. And that's what ACB is doing. They don't want to rush. They want to get things done right. And you know what? They are going to be on the ball. And by the way, for those of you who do not know Nelson Peltz, okay, he's the non-executive chairman of Wendy's. He's also a director of Procter & Gamble. And he used to be uh, one at Mondelez, which now owns Oreo and H.J. Hines. He's also the pre uh, CEO of the hedge fund called Tryon Fund Management. And in the past, he also uh, used to shake up GE back in the day to shake up their leadership and slash the cost. So you know what? This man's very smart, and I'm really happy to see he's on this team. So good job, ACB. And Jim, let's hear about this chart. Well, we've been watching this stock for almost... I'd say almost a year now, even more than that. And one thing about it, if you watch a stock every day, you learn their patterns, you learn their supports, and you, you learn their pivot points and resistances. Well, right before earnings came out yesterday, I said this stock's going to pull back to eight bucks. But I also said that I thought they were going to be profitable too. So I wasn't, wasn't on key with that. And that's what kind of made so anticipation into earnings. It ran up after hours and it ran up to a trend line that I had up here at 882. And then when I woke up this morning, I noticed that thing pulled right back to eight bucks. And I posted a little shot in the room about that eight dollars because I was kind of boasting about it a little bit. But then it pulled back a little bit more right before the bell opened here at 782. And I yelled out, time to buy, time to buy. You know, the thing's going to run up going to hit the eight bucks and if we want to go ahead and hit my other two resistance lines 
which is 835. If we can break that 835, which we did, and it did pull back to that 835 after it did break it, so that created a real solid support. And the reason I call it a support is because that was what the support was um, yesterday, Tuesday, where it pulled back to that 835. So that was pretty solid about that support level, which I made into a resistance after it hit that $8. And then I've always had a support level at 865. So I was saying if we can break that 835, we're going to run up and hit that 865. And that's going to be your solid resistance. And anything past that is going to be a gift for right now. Well, as you can see, we did break that. And it did. And look where we are right now. After hours, we're right here back at that 835 level again. So, you know, I've watched this stock every day for every day, five days a week, seven days a week almost for nine months. And I know what this thing's going to do, and I know how it's going to how it's going to roll. So, and it usually rolls a pretty good blunt when you're done with it. So we're here at 8:35. We're going to go ahead and hold this as support. Anything below this is going to be oversold area. If it gets back to that eight dollars again, that's going to be a strong buy. Right now, we're going to call this 8:35 a pivot point, and we're going to call this 8:65 a resistance, and that's what we've got to break to bring it on up. And let me pull up the year's chart. I called this out a while back, not down here at 4, but right when it was right around the $6 area. And it ran all the way up to a 100% gain. And then it pulled back and dove below that. So that was a strong buy when it dipped back down there to that 460 area. And then it ran all the way back up to the $10 mark. And when she's pulled back now just to, to I would say, a pretty good yearly pivot point which is right here. You can see we tried to hit a high there, we tried to hit it there, we tried to hit it there, and we tried to hit it there. So I'm going to call this a pivot point on a year, and that is right around the $8 level. So, and you can't complain about that. If it pulls back to that pivot point area, we still are in the resistance part of that year's chart. So then I'm going to go ahead and pull up this one day one more time and give you the final pullback. I'm going to say low support is going to be right here at 8. Anything below it is a strong buy. We've got a pivot point right here at 835. You see we've already bounced off that 835 right there up to 848 to where I do started these two moving averages. It's been my case study this week. I've been studying the 50 or the 34, the 50, and the 200 EMA and looking for crossovers. There's your crossover right there on the 34, and here's your crossover right here. As it crosses down below the 200, and it was a sell-off trigger. So, but we landed right back to that support at 835, which is now a pivot point, and resistance is going to be 865, and we want to try to break that resistance. And anything over that's a gift for right now. In this stock, I do believe, I really strongly believe this, that ACB, CGC, Tillery are my top three pot plays. And the next one we're going to talk about is CLRB. Okay, so CLRB. I did not trade the stock at all. Uh, Jim, I think, was busy trading this one today okay, on long. CLRB. So I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about. Let's hear it. Okay, well, this is the website to CLRB, and they did have some news today. And basically, I'm, I'm the trendsetter when it comes to the charts. And I'm going to pull that chart up right now and show you how I played it all day long. And what was that, a uh, CLRB? That was a beautiful little chart. I knew right, right at this morning when it broke out and pulled back right to support level that this was going to be my play of the day. It did create a little channel pre-market too, which gave it a positive result for a new, new breakout. And we did break out to 273, and we pulled back, and I created a little trend channel right here. And I'll show you that. And this is where I scalped two times. And then she ran up here and found a little resistance right here, right around the, the $3 area. And it pulled right back to support, which was at 270 And then there was a couple of times in here where I called it out. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, uh, oh, let's go to the three-minute. But I was calling these pullbacks out every time, and it just ran beautifully. And then a knife came in. We had a little bitty pullback right here and I didn't jump into that trade until it finally showed me what I really like to see and that's three 
three black crows and I'm going to pull them up right here and when I noticed these three black crows right here at 1260 I went ahead and jumped in the trade and I, and we ran up and we hit that 34 and that's when I got out and that was right at 270 and then she pulled back a little bit more and she started bouncing up and down and there was a couple scalps that could have been made in that area so now let's pull it up to the uh, rest of the day and you see we held that 270 pretty well and she went ahead and bounced up to the 276 and then had an ascending triangle pattern right here and these are one of my favorite patterns when it kind of goes up and it has a flat line and usually when it breaks out of that we had three white soldiers come into play and I called them three white soldiers out and I said it's time to take your profit and I love it when, when it, each minute candle the base is higher than the previous base before same as right here which gave it a continuation for the three white soldiers and you can look them up on the internet three black crows and three white soldiers and those are one of my top five patterns that I trade and then she pulled back and ended into close we kind of created a little descending pattern right now here right around 284 but that was a beautiful run from 270 all the way up to 290 and it actually had a high right around 294 so I'm going to be watching this come tomorrow I'm going to call support level right here right around 260 I don't want to see that fail that's going to be my low support pivot point in this area is going to be these three little channels right in here the 270 273 to 275 area 76 that's going to be my pivot point and then my resistances will be the 283 289 and I want to see it break that three dollar level 295 and get back up in here but we kind of have a downward pattern right here and I'll show you what I'm talking about so we might not get that but I'm definitely going to be watching this this trade and I'm saying probably right about um, right about there so we need to break this resistance up here at 291 to continue up for a double top and break this resistance high that we had today at 313 but yet always remember it can pull back to 260 there was a lot of bears trying to fight this today and they lost the war when they see stuff like this they just don't read the charts I read the chart and I knew when I saw these three black crows that we we're gonna have us a nice little run until the end day of close and that's CLRB I think I scalped this five times today and and hit my limit of the day and this is another one that a lot of people play and it's going to be Cisco. Okay, so you know what? Cisco had their earnings today after hours and you know what? Very impressive earnings with Cisco. I got to tell you this company is doing so well. You know, they're into this uh security, they're into firewall protection, they're into breach detection. Um their system infrastructure includes switches and routers, they're into cybersecurity. I mean, they're just doing so well. And the reason is because the strength and focus area, like cybersecurity, is super, super hot. So just to give you a quick snapshot, their net income rose to $3.04 billion, um, up from where it was at $2.69 billion. So that is just fantastic. Um, so I'm mentioning the stock because I am going to look at the options on this one tomorrow since the earnings was so good. And we'll be looking at the May 31st expiry and we will be looking at the calls for the $53 calls and or even the $54 calls on Cisco. So we'll be looking at options again expiring on May 31st. And uh, the $54 calls, they were going for $0.82 cents earlier in the day. Um, so we'll see what those are going to be worth tomorrow. They might be worth, obviously, more because the earnings was good. The $53 calls are a little pricier. Um, those ones are about $1.29. So we'll take a look tomorrow and see what's going on there. But definitely, if you like to trade options, uh, Cisco is one that you may want to look at. I'm going to specifically target the May 31st expiry date on these ones. So good luck to your trade. Jim, over to you on the chart. All right. Cisco. Let's 
pull up the year's chart and I'm first going to look at my moving averages that I'm in my case study today. We had a crossover this morning right here, the 34 over the 200 EMA. And then it kind of came down and crossed back down, but hug up snug to that 200 and then broke out after hours. Look at the, how that bounce, look at the bounce on that after hours from 52.39 all the way up to a 54 high. And we've created a little descending flag right here, so this thing could pull back a little bit more. And if it does, I'd like to see it hit the, hit the high of today, and that's right around 52.70. I'm going to draw that trend line in right now because I haven't charted this up one bit. You're going to see how I chart things. I'm going to have a low support right down here, right around the 52.17. I'm going to look in here after hours. I see a trend line right there. I see another one right here. I see another one right here, another one right in here. A triple bottom right here, you see that? Right there at 53.36 with a double top resistance. And I'm going to go with this base right here, right around 54.34. Well, so I'm going to look at the yearly chart now and see where we lie on this thing. Yeah, we've got a lot of room to go up on this. We've got some jingle bells going on, Christmas music in the background. And we're going to go ahead and pull this up to 54.98. So we've got a lot of room to climb up on this thing. I mean, it, it had a high up here of 57.53 just not too long ago, and that back on the, I mean, just beautiful. It, this this is really good for a rebound play. It looks to me like it can get up to this area right here, right around the 52, which it did hit 52 or 53.86. So let me pull up the 20 day. Yeah, that gives a lot better picture of it. So right now we're at 53.84. We got to break a resistance up here at 54.34 to get up to the other two resistance levels, and that's going to be at 55 and 55.68. And you still have more room to climb on this trade. This is just a 20-day chart. So we did hit a bottom here about oh on Monday back here at 51 back during the the sell-off. This would have been a great stock to be watching during that sell-off we had when we were down 700 points because this thing went all the way down to $51 and it's bounced already up here to 53.83 right now with a high up here right around the 54.33 area, 35. So this is how I'm going to tell how I think that action is going to happen. Low support at 52.18, low, low, low. Then you've got the 52. 71 to 52.89 for the second support. First one's going to be right around this area in here, 53.30 to 56.65. Then you got the resistances that bring you on up to resistance high of 55.68. But you're going to have little mountains that you're going to have to climb here. One of them's going to be right here at 54.68. So I'm going to draw that little trend line right there. Every time you see a peak, that's where you want to put a resistance line. Same as right here, you know, it's 50, 54, 98, 55, more or less rounded off, 5505. So, yeah, you're welcome to stop these videos at any time, save these charts, and use them as a personal uh, tool for trying to find resistance at this level. Never go off my numbers, try to find them on your own. And the next one we're going to talk about is something that I love and that's love LUV okay so LUV um, I want to bring this one up Southwest Airlines and I uh, just wanted to mention that they actually had um, a 400 million dollar uh, share buyback program but they actually mentioned that once that's finished they have approved the board has approved one for uh, two billion dollars of share buyback so i really like that when a company wants to buy back their own stock um so on luv i'm looking again for an options call looking again for the may 31st expiry date and i'm going to be looking at actually the 53 dollar calls as well on this one so very similar to the one we talked about on cisco but on love i'm going to be looking at the 53 dollar calls and those are going for about 65 cents. So be looking at those tomorrow and basically based on share buyback and looking for the stock to have a form of continuation 
over the next couple weeks in response to that news. So, Jim, over to you on the love chart. You're in the money right now, darling. Yeah. So this thing will probably pop up tomorrow. Who knows? We'll see how, how it reacts. I'm going to look at one option here myself. I'm going to go to the 24th. Okay. I just want to take a look at it. So let's go to love. I love stocks. Mm, that's strange. So we're at 51.98 here. What I was just looking at. I was looking at the one that's $53 strike. Okay. So we're right down here at 51.85 right now after hours. We did close at 52. I'm going to pull up the one year. And kind of go ahead and erase all this gibberish here. We'll start fresh. Got a low support right down here at 51.02. We're at 51.98 right now. Another one here at 52.01. And I'm going to have another resistance level right here, right around the 53. And then another one right here, right around the 54.56. So I see that. Then I'm going to pull up the 20 day. We did have a year high of $64. We do have, I'm going to pull up this other chart. It's going to have my 100 SMAs on it, which I can be a better guide for me. Magnify this up. So we got a low support at 5102. Second support is going to be at $52. And then we got a pivot point, or resistance that we got to break right here at 5307 with a long up here at 54.56 and I'm going to add another resistance line right here and we'll pull up the 20 day I see another one right in here I like that and I like this and I like that so we did pull back to 51 after hours which is very beautiful that's going to be my low support on this trade and we're going to have another one right here. This is going to be the second support at 51.59. Then your first one's going to be right here, right around the 52 area. That's going to be your pivot point between the 52 and the 52.38. So this little area right here, I'm going to go ahead and draw that in with a with a square. This is going to be the pivot point area. Then your resistances will be everything above that. 5275, 53, 5350 up to 5384. So that 5350 that Miss Vegas is talking about is going to be your resistance, your third resistance, and anything above that is going to be a gift. And this is LUV Southwest Airlines. And that'll be it for our watch list today. We kept it to five. That's ENSV, ACB. CLRB, which I did very well in today, Cisco had great earnings, and LUV, love. And also, I want to mention, this is the website, our website here, and if you would please hit that Twitter bird right there and follow us on Twitter. Hit that follow button, and you also will get updates throughout the day of stocks that we're looking at. If you're not logged into our website or in our chat room. And also, please ring that bell to our YouTube channel and and subscribe to us that way. And Miss Vegas, anything else you'd like to say? No, you know what? I just want to tell everyone that you know, it is, uh, you know, we just got to block the noise and focus on price and chart action. And I do want to say, I want to give a shout out to Dogs, who's in my room. And, uh, you know, he did a phenomenal option call. Um, what he did was he was really focused on Again, just focus on chart action. He was focused on Google and he was watching that chart like a hawk. And can I just tell you guys, he gave an option trade on Google and the idea that he gave today. And this is, again, just a day trade. Uh, wasn't a lot of money for what he uh, recommended. Um, you know, again, his opinion, he was just 
charting it, charting it and trading it on price action. And uh, what he did was he bought the option call. Uh, this is the one for the strike price. I'm trying to see if I could find it. He bought two contracts. They both expire on Friday. And I just can't see the strike price, though. It's hard for me to see it. Um, I think it was 1170 strike price. And he paid $3.40, so $340 on one call. And it went all the way up to $885 for one contract. So that is just, you know, over 100% on his trade. So i got to give him a shout out. Uh, he's been really alerting some really great ideas. And uh, you know what? What I really like so much about the team is, you know, I can't always call everything and find everything. Uh, everyone here works together. There's no ego. And we're all here just to support and help each other at the end of the day. Everyone wants to make money. And that's what we're here to do is help make money, help people find a good setup and focus on chart and price action and just block the noise out, even though we know that there's stuff going on behind the scenes. But you just trade the chart. And when it's when it's going to be bearish, you just close that trade. Um, so I want to give him a uh, pat on the back and say, you know what? Good work. He's been working really hard and having some really good calls. So good to hear. And I want to thank everyone for have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. If you do want to join our chat room, we do offer a two week free trial. You go to the website and hit this page right here, the chat room service. And it tells you exactly how to get in the chat room. We're on a Discord channel, and you can listen to us, Vegas and I, live. And we do have open mic almost every day for people to come in and talk about their trades or, or just kind of chit-chat a little bit, but mostly about stocks. We try to have fun, and we try to keep all the nonsense out of the, out of the room and all the trouble. And just basically just go to this, and we want to also give this offer to all women out there you get a whole free month for free it's international women's day all year long and i love stocks and that'll be it today's date may 15th 2019 and we love stocks